Today, the role of Nicholas Cassadine will be played by Chris Beatum. Hi. Hi. Thank you for coming. Oh, that's okay, honey. How's your arm? Oh, it's getting better. You know, this is the second time that I've been here today. I brought the girls, and Christine has taken a liking to hot chocolate and watercress sandwiches. Oh, sorry I missed that. <laughs> this is about business. I, um, I need my trusted lawyer. Consider me on retainer. Sit. Well, when I arrived home this evening, I found my divorce papers waiting for me. So I, uh, I just want to make sure that I completely understand. If I sign them, the divorce is final, right? That's correct. But maybe you don't want to sign them. Hey, Blondie. I need your help. Well, more importantly, Carly needs your help. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to stop Sam and Carly from begging that doctor to do the surgery. Well, let them then. The only thing that's important now is getting Patrick to save your life. Sam, the doctor and I are in the middle of very important negotiations. Well, we're wasting time that Jason doesn't have. It's obvious that Dr. Drake bailed on Jason's surgery because he doesn't have what it takes. The hell I don't. My niece is teetering on the brink of better mental health, and I want to give her a leg up. So I'm hoping that you, as her best friend, will help me put her on her feet. Okay, whatever you're selling, I'm not buying. She needs encouragement from the people who care about her most. And that doesn't include you. I have a meeting. Excuse wait, wait. The Metro Court Hotel. Carly wants to buy it. Jax is being reluctant, so I'm thinking maybe you could just whisper in his ear a little bit and help her out. And why would I do that? And why do you suddenly care? She's my niece. And whether you know it or not, I have a wife who has lost her battle for mental health. I know what Carly's going through. What does Luke Spencer get out of this? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'll just be a broad shoulder for Carly to lean on, or maybe I'll be a trusted advisor and help her out. But the point is, you need to talk Jax into selling the hotel. Jax and I want an amicable divorce. Okay, the last thing I need to do is alienate him because you, you've convinced Carly to try and buy his hotel. It's, it's a delicate situation. So is Carly's mental health. And I thought, since you are her best friend, you'd want to help. Okay, if you honestly care about Carly, which I sincerely doubt, you will leave her alone and let the professionals help her. Why don't you leave Jax alone too while you're at it? The divorce is just a formality. The marriage was over a long time ago. Nothing is over as long as the two of you have feelings for each other. Alexis, the distance between us, the things that we went through, they were just too much to take. My darling nephew who I love to death. Let me just put forth a theory, if you don't mind. You and Emily hit a, a bumpy road. Actually, it was a gigantic pothole, but fate took its twists and turns, and you ended up in the arms of Courtney Matthews, who coincidentally is the wife of my best friend and ex-husband, but that's beside the point, or not. Because when you and Emily's marriage hit the fan, a lot of people had ducked the debris. Okay, I know there's a point. Here, I have somewhere. one. I have a point. Sometimes it just takes me a little while to get there. Where was I? Oh, 
Hearts were broken and lives were trashed, and that's the truth, and you have to live with that, mister. That's what you think this is about, my ego. See, if you didn't follow through with this thing with Courtney, then, then you would have looked like you were failing and a lot of people's pain could have been avoided. Baggage, Nicholas. You came into this relationship with baggage and this relationship already had a lot of baggage. Yeah, but Courtney and I are in love. Alrighty. If that's the case, then I, I do wish you happiness. I just really want you to give some thought to your motives because guilt is a lousy foundation for any relationship. Robin, Sam and Carly are wasting your time. This doctor friend of yours already said he doesn't want to operate. Okay, he's no friend of mine, and if Sam and Carly can convince him, then I'm all for it. Well, I'm not. I don't want Carly, I don't want Sam, I don't want anyone begging for me. How many years have you taken care of everyone else? Let someone do the same for you. Look, maybe you've made peace with whatever's ahead. But some people just can't stand by and watch you die without making every conceivable effort. Should I be the one to tell Sam to give up on you? I don't think so. I mean, why do you think that I put up with Patrick's overblown ego and obnoxious behavior? Because when I couldn't save you, I had to find someone who could. I do appreciate everything you've tried. Okay, then prove it. Just hang on a little longer, please. Don't let your pride get in the way of your life. I do hope you appreciate the irony. Carly and Sam hate each other. Carly and I hate each other. But all of us are willing to put that aside and help you. You can thank us later. I need to talk to you. Who we'll let him in? I'm busy right now, Nicholas. Look, this is important. Pl just come home with me, okay? Why? So you can leave me for Courtney again? So you can tell me that love lasts forever and then break my heart? I was wrong, okay? I'm sorry. Leaving you was the worst mistake I ever made in my life. Emily, look at me. She can't. I've moved on, just like you. I'm with someone else now. No. No. Not Sonny. Please, just tell me that you're not with Sonny. Whoa. You alright? Hi. You just... Yeah. You want the best, you won't find better than me. And what the hell are you waiting for? The patient is all but terminal. The senior Dr. Drake gave you false hope even suggesting this surgery was possible. Oh, I get it. He's a coward. I'm giving you the facts. I can't help it if you don't like them. Tell them, Dr. Scorpio, who knows this procedure better than I do. No one. But if you're done with your diva fit, you could scrub in now. Waste of my time. You know what? I think Sam's right. You are a coward. You're all show and no go. So are you going to prove them wrong? Fine. I'll do it. Good. I'm going to tell Jason. Hopefully he hasn't left yet. She acts like I should be paying her for the chance to do the surgery. Let me tell you something. If you save him, money won't be your only reward. But if you don't, there won't be a corner in hell you can hide in. Is, could I be any clumsier? <laughs> Sorry, I, I did, didn't even realize that I'd, I'd not... You don't have to apologize. I mean, you know, we've been, we've been, I'm sure we both haven't had a lot of sleep lately. You too? I keep telling myself it's impossible. You know, it can't be real. Though. I gotta let it go. And then the thoughts keep coming back. In my head. And I, I, I can't get around it. 
Thank you. Uh, for that, Sonny, for your for your honesty. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, I thought it was just me, but to know that I'm I'm not alone, I I didn't want to say anything, but now that that I know that that you feel it too. That's all I've been thinking about. Will Jason live? Will he die? You know, I mean, it's like, what's going to happen in the surgery? Mm. I mean, I'm sure you've been thinking about that too, about Jason, you know, worried about that, because it can't, it just... <laughs> oh, like... <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, you, you, you're right, I, um... Uh... I should have known. Uh, you didn't sleep last night. I, I mean, I can see your bedroom window through, uh, through mine. <clears throat> I want ore number two. It's not as good as I'm used to. But it's the best you have here. Get me a list of available times. I don't like to be rushed. So you're operating on Jason Morgan. Good news travels fast. I think you should take a hard look at the point of entry. Technique is most successful when access posterior to the temporal region. I appreciate the input, doctor. But things are different these days. Techniques have become a little sophisticated since you put down your scalpel. I thought you let you pull your punches. Say what you mean. Since I was face down in the gutter, things have changed. Have it your way. I still remember a thing or two, like it's more important to save the patient's life than to be right. The day will come when you need compassion. And I hope that you get more than you just showed your own father. Patrick has agreed to operate. The surgery's back on. So much wrong. You know this is everything that I've hoped for, but now that it, it it's here, I just, um... Look, whatever happens, no one can ask for more than you've given me. arrogant doctor. I mean, if he is half as good as he seems to think he is, he should be able to negotiate world peace when he's done operating on you. But don't worry, put the fear of God in him. What? You threaten the doctor that's going to perform brain surgery on Just Jason? Just to keep him honest. I softened it with a little judicious flirting. I let the good doctor think you might have oh, something don't, to look okay? forward to. Okay, no flirting. It's fine. No, it's not fine. Don't do anything. No threats, no helping, and absolutely no plans. This man agreed to operate. Why can't... Jason. Jason? tea you'll be up all night actually i just did you a huge favor really to tell i just had a long talk with nicholas and told him he should take a good look at his relationship with courtney before signing any divorce papers with emily oh you are a good friend i know i am but i didn't do it for you i did it because i don't think that he and courtney is a couple will last i'm not sure that you and courtney will okay you know that's what still I, I, I appreciate it. okay well as long as you're appreciating me you should know that luke is nosing around in your business really mm -hmm. man needs a hobby He's trying to help Carly take over your hotel, so don't oh. give him any leverage. Luke's got nothing on me. Dr. Meadows, right? Do I know you? You do now. Is this what's been going on? These are his seizures? Yeah, in varying degrees. Varying? And you've done nothing about it till now? For starters, shut up. He can hear everything you say. Second, I have been fighting for months to save his life, so don't be a Monday morning quarterback. Oh, great. He's having seizures? And you're gonna oh. use sports analogies? That's it. We're out of time. 
What do you mean we're out of time? What, what, is he? No, he is not dead. And he can hear everything you say, doctor. His breathing is regular, but his heart rate is elevated. This is Dr. Patrick Drake. I need that OR ready immediately. When this patient dies, it's on your head, right? Because my malpractice insurance doesn't cover your incompetence. Great. We're on. Excuse Wait a minute. You gotta get better because I can't take it if you don't. Thanks, Mom. Right, just keep me posted and uh, try not to worry. Yeah, I love you too. You got you got mail. Honey, Jason's having the operation within the hour. What happened? He had another seizure. All right, I gotta go. Is it, Jason specifically asked us not to not to go. No, I gotta go. All right, well, I I'm going to honor his request. I don't know that I'll be able to go without him uh, seeing my own fear. He can hide it better. Don't bet on me. Tell Jason I love him. Yeah. Okay, I need you to just stop for a second and hear me out. Works for me. I hate all the forms. You may be the A number one hotshot, but your bedside manner stinks. I've never seen bedside manner cure a patient yet. How about just simple human kindness? You know, some people think that hospitals are cold and frightening places. And you'd like it to be all warm and fuzzy. Stuff teddy bears on every pillow, serve up the meds on little lace doilies. Treat the patient as a human being, not a lab specimen. Reassure the family. Sorry if I don't fit your sensitivity standard. Maybe you can discover a new drug to cure me. Get something useful out of all that research you're so in love with. I've got to get ready for surgery. Your boy Jason is toast. I'll scrub up and observe. Not in this life, sweetheart. Could you to give me a minute with Carly? Thanks. I don't want to fight. I don't want to either. Why don't you listen to me? If you die, I will lose my mind. And this time, there'll be no coming back from it. You're gonna, you're gonna be all right. No, I won't. I need you. You are the only person in my life who has never given up on me. So don't you give up, okay? I'm gonna do my best to live, Carly. <laughs> You gotta promise me something. Anything. Be the mother Michael and Morgan need you to be. I'm working on that. Okay. And be nice to Sam and Robin. Don't <laughs> fight with them. And another thing, no matter what happens, for the rest of your life, I want you to count to ten before you do anything. I don't need to do that because I can just come to you and you'll set me straight. I'm just saying if, you know, I'm not, if I'm not here. You're going to be here. You're going to be here. And I know it, okay? So don't even waste your breath arguing with me, all right? You know, there was a day a long time ago when I was sitting bar named Jake's and this guy walked in the hottest guy I'd ever seen and I just told myself I have to have this guy or I die trying <laughs> you, you were really bored that's the truth no. <laughs> yeah my boy on the side I told you it'd be like that because I'd never feel anything and I I couldn't have been more wrong Do me a favor. Um, you're about as patient as I am. And I know that if you hang around during this uh, operation that you're probably gonna get into an argument or a fight with somebody. <laughs> yeah. So why don't, why don't you go to Jake's? You know, have a beer, shoot a game of pool. For me. Just remind yourself that you 
You can survive, Carly. You can survive anything. Letitia. Oh, good. Um, Santa decided to come early. Yeah, they'll be thrilled. Well, yeah, I kind of went a little overboard. I mean, I know how much they're missing their mother, and I don't know, with the holidays coming, I'm sure it's going to be a lot for you to handle. I'm fine. Here, Courtney, I have a nice relationship with the boys. Oh, I don't doubt that for a second. Okay, look, the truth is, Carly is uh, worried about the amount of time the boys have been spending with you. I mean, you can't blame her for feeling a little threatened, you know? I, I just, I really don't want it to affect her recovery. So would you rather that uh, Michael and Morgan feel abandoned? I mean, Emily, I'm, I'm Sonny's sister. I'm Michael and Morgan's aunt. I'm Carly's best friend. And look, if, if you would just back off a little, I'll make sure the boys don't feel abandoned. I, I just, I think that this would be be best for everyone, especially their mother. When's it ever enough for you? Carl, it's time to go back to Rose Lawn. Look, there's a, a pull cube at Jake's with my name written on it. Wait, wait, you can't be serious. You can come and you can watch from afar or you can back off, but I'm doing this for Jason. Carly, I let you bend the rules, but it seems like you won't give up until they're broken. Do you have a family, Dr. Winters? Do you have a brother? best friend or first love. Roll those into one, and that's what Jason means to me. He's the one person I trust. He is the only man who has forgiven me and never asked for anything in return, and he just collapsed in front of my eyes. And it hit me that he could die. So going to Jake's to shoot a game of pool may seem weird to you, but it means something to me and Jason, okay? Carly. I'm just looking out for you. Would you please tell her? Lainey, your job is to help her get better, and you have done that to the best of your ability. If Jason has asked her to do this, then you should respect this. If this goes bad and I get sued, you better be prepared to defend me. Gratis. You're the surgeon, but I am still Jason's specialist. I will be in the OR. I don't work with audiences. You don't know how to work without one. I know hospital policy. Sorry, I went on this one. Are you even tall enough to see over the table? <laughs> Gee, I'm a real doctor and everything. Hurling insults at me won't make me run away, but nice try. Well, how about this? What does hospital policy say when the specialist is in love with the patient? It's history, doctor. Old news. You cannot be objective in surgery, Dr. Scorpio. You are emotionally involved, and that's always dangerous. You are just as emotionally involved as I am. Well, Jason's not my type, but the hot blonde and the hot brunette that are tag-teaming all over him? Well, that's another story. Well, I'm talking about your father. You were performing the surgery to prove something to Noah Drake, and I know better than to accuse you of incompetence. So why don't you stop fighting me, stop wasting time, scrub in, and let's show everyone what a genius you are. Thank you for the, you know, time with Carly. It wasn't easy. Not just because it was Carly, but because I want you all to myself. You know, I'm grateful for every day I've had with you. Sorry. That's okay. I know I wasn't supposed to. I just. It's good you're here. I actually have a favor to ask. I'm gonna go get coffee. Mm -hmm.
What is it? Um, you know, if, if I don't if I don't make it through this, just take take care of Sam for me, okay? You got my word. Just work things out with Carly. Coleman, bring me an El Rey salt. Well, look what showed up. So what are you doing, Tiger? I'm here to shoot again. Give it a run for your money. Sorry. This game's reserved for someone special. Carly's paranoia shouldn't be my problem. And if you were the friend that you say you are, you'd reassure her instead of feeding her ridiculous suspicions. Well, are they ridiculous? There's nothing going on between me and Sunny. Okay, well then why are you fighting so hard to stay here, Emily? I mean, you're supposed to be in med school. You have a life. Did I do something terrible to you? Oh, come on. Emily, don't make this personal. Look, I love my nephews, okay? I think that taking care of them now when they need their family would be good for them. I also think that it, it would help me in the next step that I'm taking in my own life. You're in the process of building a romance with my ex-husband. You have a baby on the way. Courtney, you're going to be spending time in my former house, double dating with my closest friends. For God's sakes, can't you leave me something? Now you know how Carly feels. I'm doing something useful. With my life, Courtney, I'm happy here. Now, Michael and Morgan are thriving, so naturally you have to march in and take over just in case there's an outside chance that I might be happy. And what do you use as an excuse? Some vague idea that it might make Carly feel better. Well, here's my answer. Leave me alone. All right, what do you want to hear, Emily? You, you want me to say that, that I don't think I deserve the life that I have, that, that I am eating myself up with guilt? Well, good news, Emily, that's how I feel. I don't know if I could take care of Carly even for you. I, I would never ask you guys to get back together. You either will or you won't on your own. But she does need you, and you know, if I'm gone, she's really going to need you. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying you have to be in love with Carly to take care of her, just so she knows there's someone there to catch her if she falls, and, and she's going to do the same for you. What I really want is for you to stick around, so that way you can take care of both of us. Well, this time it's out of my hands. I know you can accomplish whatever you want. I'm not gonna say goodbye. I'm proud to have you as my friend. All right, I'll let you guys Rough day, huh? Yeah. 
weird day, but it's getting better by the second. And you couldn't ask for a better wake up call. I forgot to tell you that um, I had a great time last night. Well, you know, the sun just went down again. So. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I have to get to work. I work the late shift. Aren't you at least a bit curious? About what? What I do, where I work. There are other things that interest me more about you. But if you want me to start asking questions, no. I can. No, I don't at all, no. But there is something we need to talk about. If I see you someplace outside of here, I need you to pretend like you don't know me and I'm gonna do the same. There's no problem. Good. I only care to know you in the biblical sense. And my life is pretty complicated right now, so a boy on the side is about all I can handle. Uh, uh, boy on the side? <laughs> uh, is that what I am? What is that, like a saddle or fries or? Yeah, something like that. It means you're not the main dish, but you're still pretty perfect. I mean, come on, a guy that lives over a bar who happens to be great in bed and doesn't care to know about the rest of my life? Wow, that's great. Are you sure you can handle that? Yeah, I can handle that. Okay. As long as you don't get all possessive and start asking more questions. You don't have to worry. I won't even ask your name. Is that good enough? I think we're going to get along just fine. Catch you later. Crawl into bed with you. as you go. I'll keep that promise. I love you. 